One of the things in the book that most impressed me, the, the, the wagon and the rope. Can you give us the wagon and the rope story? I think okay. Butch Lewis gave it to you. Yeah, Butch Lewis, who's deceased now, he taught me something very serious. When you are a person who is success-minded, you have a wagon that you are pulling uphill. Attached to this wagon is this very thick rope. You are shirtless. You have a rope on your back and you are pulling this wagon uphill at all times. You are totally responsible for your wagon. You are the only one on rope. Now, in order for the wagon to go up the hill, you have to have people, like-minded people, people on your staff, employees, people who you partner with. The thing of it is, though, you are the only one responsible for the pool. What you have to be careful of is as you pull this rope up, rope up the hill, you have to make sure that everybody that's on the wagon is doing something to get the wagon up the hill. Everybody's foot got to be hanging off that wagon, pushing. Somebody got to get off the wagon and move rocks from under the wheel. It's an old wagon you pull it. But what happens along the way, and you got to be careful, there are people who will get on your wagon and have no value. Get on your wagon and become very, very comfortable. All of a sudden, they feet up off the ground. They just on the wagon riding. And you have them in your life as, as a mother. Everybody you has have somebody children. in the wagon they're pulling. You, you all got somebody on your Everybody's wagon. Everybody has somebody in the wagon they're pulling. That's doing nothing. They've got their feet up. Seriously, sometimes it's your children. They just put their feet up. Now, at a young age, you understand that. But once they get to a certain age, you want them to, to help out. Sometimes it's your business partner. Sometimes it's the people you hire. Sometimes it's the people in your other department that's supposed to be helping with a project and they just got their feet up. Whoa, 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 whoa. You are now making my haul on this rope more difficult than it is. You must now shed yourself for this dead weight. If you don't, your, your climb with your rope will be, it's agonizing. Well, also, you have a place, I love this in the book, for the people to get off the wagon. They, everybody has some people on their li on their, in their lives who they need to make a list to get them out of their wagon. You got to get them off. You got to make a list of everybody in your life and what they provide for you. And it's okay. You got to, this is a hard list to make, but you've got to come to the conclusion of who is a benefit to you in your life and who is a detraction in your life. You can't afford the detractions. They weigh too much. They cost too much. They demand too much. They require too much. They just over there. And so once you make this list <laughs> of who's effective, now comes the tough part. You've got to be a bigger person. You're actually going to do them a favor. See, when you get up to the tall, at the top of the pyramid, it's thin out there. Everybody at the bottom, but it's thin. And the higher you go up that hill, the, the higher you climb, the thinner the air gets. And people are just hanging on. And, and when you, you, see, they create words that try to tie you to them. Uh, don't forget where you come from. <laughs> oh, man, oh, uh, oh, uh, okay. So now you all that, you don't know nobody. Whoa, whoa, do you know how many times I done heard that phrase coming from people? Oh, you done forgot where you come from. No, I ain't forget nothing. But see, you not in my world no more. And I ain't got to cape you around. You know, the biggest mistake I made, I, a buddy of mine from Cleveland who never really got out the, the streets or anything, I invited him to a show mm. in Detroit. Mm. He drove up from Cleveland, 111 miles. I told him I was going to get him a room. He got there before I got there, so I had kind of forgot the room. He at the front desk of the hotel, the Anthenium Hotel in Detroit. I'll never forget it. <laughs> I walk in the lobby. Little Asian guy worked behind the desk. He done pulled him across the desk. Now, he got this poor little dude just across the desk, feet off the ground, everything. As I come into the lobby, Steve said, I got a room here. I walk in, I watch all my years of building a brand yeah. just going down the tube because I got this guy yeah. that I grew up with yeah. that I don't want to think, I don't forgot where I come from. Yeah. I invited him back into my world. I don't pull people over counters. Yeah. I don't talk to people crazy in the hotel. Yeah. He's saying my name. That's all he's saying. Now, they don't know him, but, but they know me. They know you. That was the last time he bit out on the road to see Steve Hart. <laughs>
Because.